So listen, guys, we have been on this journey together here on YouTube for several years at this point. If you guys remember way back in the day in 2022, I declared that year the year of Chanel. And instead of buying Chanel, we veered left and bought an Hermes Kelly, which I think I'm much more happy with at the end of the day. But I'm trying to decide, like, what is my next Hermes bag? Is it is it the So Kelly? Is it the Maasai? Is it the Bolide? Is it another Birkin or Kelly? Or do I want to take those funds and kind of pivot and try something new? So over the weekend, we went shopping with our friend Jamie over at Lux Petite, and we stopped in at Todd's. And I talked about this bag on my channel a couple of times so far this year, the Todd's dye bag, and especially that new East West version, the pillow dye. I tried it on in the off-white color and I was like, okay, like I'm loving this, but it was nearly 3k and I'm like, oh, for 3k I should buy something else that has better resale value, whether that be Hermes or Chanel. And I'm like, you know, I kind of, in, in the grand scheme of things, the ladder of luxury, if you will, I skipped over that Chanel rung. I went for my like LV, Fendi, YSL area of the ladder, skipped over Chanel, went straight to the top at Hermes, and I'm like, am I missing anything with Chanel? Like, do I regret not having a Chanel? Like, don't get me wrong, there are some Chanel styles that I like, but do I like them as much, if not more, than say I would with an Hermes bag? So today we're going to try and work through this, because there are seven styles that I personally love, and we're going to do like a bonus honorable mention, but like, I want to know, like, are these Caleb Snell style bags? Are they Caleb Snell approved? Do I need these over another Hermes? I don't know. So let's dive into it. But before we get started, guys, hey, my name's Caleb. I post luxury and lifestyle related content. When you ask, I love that about you. Always stay curious every Wednesday, Friday, and Saturday. So if that's something you're into, make sure to subscribe button down below. Consider joining our membership. We have an awesome engaged community, extra perks, access, you name it. And let's dive into the top seven Maybe it's a Caleb Snell style Chanel bag list, and I'm excited to see what you guys have to say. Now, before we dive in, my, my producer has mentioned I should probably point out what's jingling, and that would be the Gucci Hercules brooch. I don't know if it's on camera, so I just want to make sure to point that out. Now, when it comes to her Chanel's personal style, she was all about those Maltese cross brooches. And while I don't have any yet, I do have some amazing Gucci brooches, so I plastered on a few today. And Hercules here has a lot to say. Anyway, let's get into this list. Now, when it comes to Chanel, in my opinion, in the grand scheme of things, you have to have black with gold hardware. Like it is a mainstay over at Chanel. It is classic, it is chic, it is timeless. And a lot of these today that I've selected are gonna be their more staple bags. Now in the argument of caviar versus lambskin, like in theory, like I'm more of a lambskin person, there's something about the texture and feel of caviar leather that is literally on another level. It is very Chanel in its essence. And I mean, when it comes to any of these bags, I could literally be swayed either way, maybe more caviar just for the structure, but I love a good lambskin moment. It's not as delicate as people think it is. So we'll see. But the first bag on this list, like the very first one that I came across when I was trying to think like, if I were to buy a Chanel bag, what would I buy? I love the vintage Diana bag. Now listen guys, we did the Princess Diana collection video a few months ago of her collection. Like she wasn't huge into Chanel, like the whole like Charles Camilla CC logo thing. Like I just think that's an urban legend if you ask me. But when it came to Chanel, she was famous for her Diana bag. And this bag, you guys, is absolutely stunning. It originally came in two sizes in the vintage. I don't know if the new one still does, but the small and the medium. For my size and stature, I'm six foot seven, by the way. I think I prefer the medium style Diana bag. It's just a little bit bigger, can hold a little bit more. I mean, we love a big bag moment around here. Now with the Diana bag, I would definitely go vintage, I think. New Chanel, I think post, what is it, 2008, 2011 maybe, is like the cutoff year for like real gold hardware and, and good craftsmanship. So I would definitely do vintage in my opinion, especially for this particular bag. I was actually lucky enough when we were in Spain, at, um, we were shopping on Passage de Gracia. What was it like 2022? Was that trip? I don't know, the vlogs are on my channel somewhere under the travel playlist. But that is when they had re-released the Diana bag and I got to see it full frontal there in the store and it was a moment, you guys. This bag is stunning. Again, would I buy new? Would I buy vintage? I think I would stick to the vintage. Luckily enough for me, I don't think the prices have skyrocketed since the new version came out, at least the last time I looked. So the medium style Diana, that's definitely a mainstay for me. And this is the second time I'm mentioning a Diana name bag in this video. The Todd's pillow die, the Diana bag from Chanel. She's clearly had a lot of effect on modern fashion, even 20, 30 years later. So make sure you go and check out that video. Link will be down below. This is a good place to start for me when it comes to Chanel. All right, guys, next up on this list and quite possibly, probably one of my favorites whenever I see it out in the wild, the Chanel Coco handle, and this could be size small, medium, large. Like I really don't, I really don't have an opinion on any of the sizes. I'd probably do medium, 
The small would be nice though, and I could replace one of my, I think I have the Brandon Blackwood Jasmine would probably be replaced by this bag. Again, I would probably stick to the gold black combo, definitely caviar leather instead of the lambskin, but I also can really appreciate the large version. And I think the large version has been redesigned. I think originally it was a little bit more north south if I remember right. Now it's still that kind of east west style that the small and the medium have. But every time I see this one out in the wild, whether that be at the Chanel boutique or if I'm out and about and someone has it shopping, um, I can literally name the last two times I saw this in the wild. One was at the Sears Tower food court. Someone had the medium size, I think, sitting out. And then someone had the size small at the Oak Brook Louis Vuitton a few months ago. And every time I see this bag, you guys, it literally catches my attention. You all know that I love a good top handle bag, especially with the flap, hence why I love my Kelly, my Fendi Peekaboos and .com, the Brandon Blackwood Jasmine. Like I love a good single top handle moment. My YSL Muse 2s that I love, like there's a recurring theme in my collection, like single top handle with a flap, I'm there. This bag also has the chain, which can go on the shoulder or crossbody, which I mean, I do like the versatility. I also like, I think the chain is removable, if I remember right. Chanel Fanatics, let me know down in the comments. This is a style that I really like. And when it comes to the colorway, like I said, black and gold was, would be perfection. And I also love when they do that like burgundy lizard handle next level. Like it, I think it's the most costly on this list probably, especially in resale, but I could see myself with a cocoa handle. Like like the 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 Caleb Snell aesthetic is definitely there. Next up on this list, these next few bags, these are gonna be more of like your shoulder slash crossbody bags. And those are quintessential Chanel, like the chain link, like we get it, we're here for it. But what I'm liking the most, as far as like the classic flat bags go, would be the jumbo. I love, love, love the jumbo. I've actually tried this on twice at the boutique. Would I pay $13,000 for it? <laughs> You're crazy, I'll get this pre-owned for like 6K, 5K if I'm lucky. Now this bag, you guys, I think this is very, it's very Caleb Snell and the jumbo on me is what a medium classic flap looks like on you, I'm betting. Like <laughs> I'm six foot seven. The bag looks proportional on me and my fellow Glamazon tall people. Like we look good with the jumbo. I love the size, like the size, it's, it's enough to carry everything I'm gonna need during the day, but it's also not ludicrously capacious where if I'm out to lunch, like I can't set it down at the table and it's taking up the entire space, much like this big boy over here, the Birkin 35. When you eat out with that, it's either just like Zane and I, and can we please have a booth? Like it's a little overwhelming when it comes to eating out with that bag. So the Chanel Jumbo definitely is like peak of my list, especially pre-owned. Again, the whole like lambskin caviar, like what would I do? Definitely the caviar in this version, but I'm also not opposed to the vintage version. My friend Quirky over at Classics with a Quirk, she has this bag. Well, I think she actually just recently sold her Jumbo, but I love the vintage Jumbo with the big CCs. Like I think it just looks cute vintage with those like kind of deflated quilts the giant cc's like it is a moment it is a vibe i don't know like when when i go into chanel like that is always the bag i try on is this a sign like should i should i lean into it i don't know but I don't know, I'm a little curious. Would a jumbo make sense in my collection? And would I grab that over say like my Birkin or a Kelly or another Birkin or another Kelly? Like it's kind of a big decision, especially even pre-owned at 6K. Like that's a decent chunk of money that could go to something else. I don't know, I'm very torn on this one. Now, conversely, when it comes to the classic flaps, I also love the mini rectangle flap bag. My husband has tried this on a few times. I've tried it on a few times, and I think this is really cute, like TB energy, perfect for like weekends, you know, bumming around the city, bumming around the city in a six, $7,000 handbag, like, goals. Again, I would probably do pre-owned if I could. Classic black gold combo, and I don't know, like I, I think it's cute, but for just a thousand dollars more, I could jump up to the jumbo, which is not much more in price, but because it's less popular, it, it you can save a bit of money and get a little bit more real estate. At the end of the day, I think the jumbo would probably be the better buy in this instance, but who knows? <sighs> Again, when it comes to like the shoulder crossbody bags, I'm also really pulled towards the 255 or the reissue bags. Size, I think 227 would probably be a good size for me. So when it comes to the reissue bags and why I like them so much, I really love the bijou chain. I think it's beautiful, it's stunning. And I, if I remember right, this is what the, the nuns at the orphanage, they had their keys on when Coco was a little girl. I think I'm right about that. And I also love that these are a little bit more under the radar. They don't have the big CC lock that Karl Lagerfeld brought to the brand. They're very simple, they're very under the radar. And I think I would do this one obviously in the lambskin. I like these when they're a little bit more rough per se. They're, they show a little bit more of their age, a little bit more vintage a little bit more, you know, ready to roll kind of and not so pristine and perfect like the classic flaps often look like. These are also at a better value because they don't have the big CCs on the front, that classic leather woven chain. So again, about 3,300 for these, 
really good deal and you're not quite into H territory as far as like the So Kelly goes or Belize, you know, things like that, like the, the Lindy, about the same price actually. So again, would I rather have the reissue in my collection? Would I rather have another H in my collection? I'm really torn, you guys, I don't know. All right, guys, I'm gonna throw out an honorable mention and then we're gonna talk about my two favorite bags because these are 100% a vibe. I don't know about you, but ever since I was in high school and everybody had those fake Chanel Cambon totes, like I have loved the Chanel Cambon collection, especially that goofy looking reporter bag, the top handle. I love it. All those pockets, you have the CC plastered on the flap of one of the pockets. They came in pink, they came in black. Like it is a vibe 100, this Cambon collection, like with this Y2K energy, they would have been really smart to bring this back for like a season or like a cap collection but I don't know there's just something it's just a big goofy looking bag and I just love all the CC locks it's a vibe I love the knot on the handles like Caleb Snell 2021-2022 definitely would have been all over this this would really would have been my aesthetic but now it's a little it's a little obnoxious in my opinion for me personally like I still love the bag do not get me wrong and if anyone's like hey Caleb want to buy this like okay sure if it's a good price as far as like collecting and curating my collection goes like does the reporter have a, a, a place in my collection i don't think it does but every time they pop up on the resale market though like just know i am very tempted now let's talk about my top two favorite bags and this next one is it, I, i'm kind of kicking myself for not buying it two three years ago and it was still like sub two thousand dollars but you guys i love the medallion tote I don't know what it is. I absolutely just love this bag. Well, I know what it is. It's 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 goofy looking. I love the CC on the front. And I especially love that medallion at the end of the chain for the zipper pull. And that guy, Parker, over on TikTok, he has one in his collection. And that kind of got me thinking, like, could I pull off the Chanel medallion tote? Like, it would have to go with, like, the absolute right outfit. It wouldn't just be, like, something I could switch into and just carry every day during the week. Like, I would have to, like, plan looks around this, I think, as a man to pull this off, in my opinion. Especially six foot seven. I'm kind of at a handicap with some of these bags. There's just something classic and chic about this design. And whenever I think about the medallion tote, I always think of Spidey's wedding from the hills when Lauren left in that blue dress and the black medallion tote. Like, I don't know why that always plays in my mind when I think about this bag. But, like, the medallion tote, like... Right now it's still like sub $3,000 in most cases. Gosh, a few years ago, I remember even like a year ago, you could have grabbed this for like $1,200, $1,400. I'm like, why didn't I? It's a regret. Okay, now the number one bag at the top of my list and kind of what inspired this whole video. So we've been rewatching the Beverly Hills Housewives and season 10, Kyle has been wearing this beautiful, Some sometimes you can, if you Google the Chanel Kelly, well before the new Kelly got re-released, this bag would come up, but this is technically the Chanel top handle flat bag. I know, imaginative, we love when brands make it easy for us to search on the resale market sarcasm but this is the chanel quilted jumbo kelly flat bag and it has honestly been at the top of my list for many years in fact this almost became the kelly of my collection before i bought the hermes kelly so we had actually tried this out over at the real real when they were in chicago they're coming back to chicago which i'm super excited about but every time i try this bag on you guys it is like love at first sight it is everything caleb snell in a bag it is slim it is tall it has a flap it has that gorgeous cc lock on the front it has the top handle what what more can you not want in a Caleb Snell bag? Like that is quintessential me in a handbag. Prices are slowly creeping up. Like I think these are now still about like three to four thousand dollars. It is literally such a vibe. It is so classic. And what I love about this, I think it's very similar in size to like the Kelly 35, maybe the 32. So it's a good size on my frame. It looks good on me. I would definitely do this in caviar, black, gold hardware, maybe even a lizard. I've seen one of those recently. That was absolutely stunning. I love this bag. So I guess my big question to you guys and and sound off in the comments let's get a conversation going we already know hercules has a lot to say do i buy a chanel bag and forego the kelly the well second kelly second birkin in my collection or or hear me out my husband just had this idea actually while we're filming and i love that he's on my side when it comes to this stuff do i buy the the two three thousand dollar chanel and then instead of going for like the big ticket h item do i go something smaller like say the lindy the bolid or like the Masai, the gal like any of those so kelly that is very high on my list especially after nicholas arst posted one over on his channel but do i do two big bags instead of like one really big bag or a smaller h and then h wallet i guess i could still do an h wallet if i wanted that's not 
Anyway, guys, what do you think in the comments? Was anything on this list, you know, Caleb Snell approved? I want to know what you think. And do I need a Chanel or can I just stick to my Hermes? Like, I don't know. Like, uh, as a bag collector, I feel like I need to be more well-rounded. And then if I buy a Chanel, then obviously I'll need a Dior. And then the whole thing could unravel. So let's get to talking down in the comments. And until next time, guys, stay safe, have fun. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.